Hi folks, I hope to get the um, midterm up, uh, sorry, the, the final exam up uh, early next week uh, so that you can complete it by um, May 14th uh, before midnight. Uh, I hope you're doing well on the other stuff. I promised to get onto the grading, uh, just trying to get through this stuff uh, early enough so that you have time if you need to watch the video uh, to watch it and uh, get uh, up to date on uh, what I'm asking here. So the final exam is going to be due May 14th. Uh, I hope to get it up by Monday. What is that? On the 10th? <clears throat> um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Something like that. Um, I hope to get it up by Monday morning so that you have four days to work on it. Uh, Muckle Chapter 7, Archaeology of the Last 5,000 Years, No Ancient Civilizations, uh, The Five Elements. Um, oh, that was above. Uh, previous, uh, maybe that was on the midterm. <clears throat> we'll see. Uh, empire, uh, State. Um, state has coercive power. Uh, state is also the legitimator of violence. So state, uh, the state is the thing that forces you to do something you don't want to do using force. Uh, the state is also the thing that legitimates all violence uh, that takes place uh, in the community from uh, from family violence to uh, workplace violence all the way up to criminal actions, etc. Um, it all gets uh, legitimated by the state. The state says this was good and that was not good. Um, six early civilizational sites. We had Mesopotamia, which is Sumerian civilization in Iraq about 5,100 years ago. Uh, in Egypt, we had the Pharaonic Egyptian uh, civilization 5,000 years ago in Crete, uh, which was uh, today part of Greece. The Minoan civilization came about 4,000 years ago. Uh, in the Indus Valley, which is uh, uh, in Pakistan, the Harappan civilization got going about 4,400 years ago. The Shang dynasty in China um, around 3,800 years ago. The Olmec uh, civilization in um, what is today Mexico in Mesoamerica. Uh, 3,500 years ago, we have civilizational collapse due to various causes, among them ecological, sociopolitical, or ideological. The population estimates, this is uh, how we find out, um, how we speculate on what uh, the population might have been. Uh, we can do count of residential structures and uh, maybe have to do some qualitative work to figure out how many people maybe actually lived in a residential structure. Um, and then there's secondary methods. None of these are really great, uh, but uh, we they're all estimates. Uh, the global estimate for 10,000 years ago is about 10 million people. For 5 million years ago, is about 100 million people. Um, for 1,000 CE, that's about 1,000 years ago, 350 million worldwide. And then, of course, today, or 2015, is 7 billion. Today, it's like 7.7 .7 billion uh, five years afterwards. Uh, no evidence of human residence prior to 5,000 years ago for the Eastern Canadian Arctic, uh, which uh, the, the earliest evidence is from 4,000 years ago, uh, and then New Zealand, Hawaii, and Rapa Nui, that's Easter Island, about 1,000 years ago, is the earliest human um, residence there that, that archaeologists have been able to find. Um... Let's see, there are four major points, this is important here, four major points uh, that the subsistence uh, changes took place. Uh, the first one was two million years ago when um, people started hunting. Uh, prior to that, it was mainly scavenging uh, for meat uh, and then gathering fruit and, and shellfish and whatever. Uh, but we started hunting animals, large animals, um, two million years ago. Uh, fire comes under our control, most likely 200,000 years ago. Uh, although there are other dates there, we're going to go with 200,000 years ago here. Uh, the third point is uh, 15,000 years ago for the domestication of plants and animals, 15,000 years ago, and then 200 years ago for industrialization. Um, so uh, for the next period here, um, the next focus on, on this chapter is the 5,000 years ago to 500 years ago in North America. Uh, that includes around 5 million people around speaking around 400 languages using uh, all kinds of methods for subsistence um, and uh, uh, including the Northwest Coast chiefdoms and Cahokia. Uh, let's see. Um, 
Archaeology of Recent Times, we have Contemporary North American Archaeology, um, Academic Archaeology, CRM, that's uh, um, Cultural Resource Management, basically professional archaeology working for construction companies or, or whatever, um, doing, uh, doing clearance basically before construction starts. Uh, then we have uh, indigenous archaeology, that is Native American corporations or uh, Alaska Native tribal corporations, um, Native American tribes uh, doing archaeology on their own um, uh, homeland. Uh, and then amateur archaeology, that is usually volunteering in CRM or academic or indigenous um, uh, archaeological investigations. Um, and then finally, looting, uh, which is bad. Why is looting so damaging? It has to do with the loss of provenience. So um, the loss of, of provenience without documentation. So the context in, within which the uh, artifact or whatever is, is discovered um, is really important. We have to document every single uh, thing that we can because once we dig it up, then its context is destroyed. Um, and if we dig it out without preserving information, uh, then we have destroyed any kind of interpretive value to that artifact. We don't know what it means or might have meant. Uh, hypothesis. Uh, let's see. World uh, archaeo historical archaeology overcoming biases when we um, have uh, histories that are uh, set in stone, so to speak. Um, archaeologists can come and look at the actual stones and maybe overturn it. Uh, that's always fun. World heritage. Uh, world heritage sites uh, are, are very valuable. Uh, for tourism, archaeotourism is going to visit many of those sites. Garbology, studying garbage, uh, nuclear waste, um, remembering that nuclear waste will will um, uh, have a half life of thousands and thousands of years, um, and so uh, archaeologists have have who who study um, civilizations where you know writing isn't known or different kinds of writing have come up with ways that people who bury the archaeological sorry the uh, nuclear waste. Uh, can ensure that future archaeologists won't um, be uh, at danger. Uh, forensic archaeology, this is uh, trying to uh, determine, uh, um, you know, who who did the crime. Disaster archaeology, you know, what, what happened here, how many people died, uh, how did they die. Pseudo-archaeology is uh, often on the Discovery Channel, the ancient alien stuff. Uh, just uh, try to ignore it. Why? Why do we ignore it? Why do we ignore the idea that uh, maybe it's possible that alien, plausible that aliens uh, came and built the pyramids or whatever. We just do our ordinary four-step scientific uh, hypothesis. So uh, when we're looking, this is important here um, to have a testable hypothesis, uh, to have a, a, a reasonable hypothesis. Uh, if it's not testable, if you can't falsify it, it doesn't count. Um, how would you know that aliens weren't here? <laughs> is it a reasonable hypothesis, right? Did the, is, is it reasonable to assume uh, that uh, the aliens built um, um, the pyramids versus the, the people whose names are on them? Uh, very much more likely that uh, the people are on them. O Occam's razor, I mean, you have to figure out, you know, warp travel or whatever uh, versus just the dudes who were sitting around there in the, in the uh, valley, uh, the Nile Valley already. Uh, which one is more likely, uh, that people have conquered uh, light speed travel or that people uh, figured out how to build pyramids? Uh, and then uniform uh, critique of all hypotheses. You can't just dismiss hypothesis one and two and then you say, well, three is the only one left, so that must be right. Well, maybe three is wrong too. Maybe you haven't discovered the fourth one. Uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, key here. Uh, Muckle chapter eight, uh, Culture, know the following. Uh, there's three points to, to culture. One, it is, it is like a lens. Uh, two, uh, that um, there are uh, 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 cultures unique to particular societies. Uh, and that uh, three, um, all cultures are equally valid and equally complex. It's a human capacity. Culture is a human capacity, but it is learned. So it is, it is um, made possible by... Uh, nature, but uh, not uh, 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 nature is not sufficient, right? There were um, uh, there's 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 all kinds of human behaviors that are not cultural that are innate, uh, but but culture are the innate ones. Uh, three banned things are just in all my classes. I ban uh, discussion of of human nature. Um, you can't say what is human nature anymore because there's so many different natures to humanity. 
Uh, common sense, you can't say, oh, that's just common sense anymore, because there are different common senses for all the different common cultures. Uh, and then those people over there, to talk about those people over there unproblematically, uh, you're, you're uh, no longer off the hook uh, for pointing over there and saying, well, you know, I'm glad I'm not like those people. Uh, because basically what you're doing is you're talking about yourself. Uh, ethnographic research. Uh, this is what we do. Um, we uh, we, we uh, do participant observation. We're coming up to that. Uh, emic versus edic. Uh, emic, remember... Um, we did uh, Bob Marley, uh, Pirates Robbed I. Um, you know that's wrong. You know it's wrong to say Pirates Robbed I. You have to say Pirates Robbed Me. Um, why me instead of I? Uh, we don't know that. We don't know that as emic. We, we know how to use the, the language, and we know, yes, that we say me and not I when it comes like that, when the, when the uh, sentence is formed like that. Uh, but we can't explain why very often uh, because we don't know grammar uh, to that extent. We don't know that uh, I represents the subject, um, the subjective case of the pronoun, and me represents the objective case. So I have to do things, but things are always done to me. Um, and if we know that, then we have an edict perspective. If we know technically how to um, explain why something happens, then we have an edict perspective, which is not necessarily an outsider. It doesn't have to be an outsider. Uh, it doesn't have to be an outsider. It could be an insider who has this technical training. Um, for example, I'm a native speaker of English, but I also know uh, grammar. Um, but uh, 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 definitely uh, people who are insiders tend to have emic perspectives. So you, you don't know how to speak English, your own English, unless you, you know, uh, in, unless you're a, a native English speaker, for, for the most part. You have to learn it um, if you're not native. Okay, I'm going to stop it here and come back uh, and talk about uh, defined the definition of culture.